Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another Cigar Talks with Jason. Today I wanted to dive more into the dynamics between a dom-sub relationship. Um, so this is kind of follow-up to my two previous videos, and I'm sure I'll do follow-ups to this one. Um, so I wanted to explore some things that were asked and go a little bit deeper into other things. So the first question was, it was something along the lines of, uh, you know, if a dom's not supposed to get off on power and control, what are they supposed to get off on? So I wanted to go a little bit more into that. Like, I know I gave the analogy about, like, a, a bad dom is basically like a little kid with a fucking anthill. They get off on... It's almost sadistic. Like, the the psyche is is almost like that of a serial killer. As far as they're... N they're doing something because it's genuinely fun for them, but in a very sick way. And a lot of abusive douchebag asshole husbands will actually like hide their behavior, like behind the pretense of, Oh, I'm just being a Dom and I'm, I'm putting you in your place. But the thing is, that's not a Dom. That's an abusive piece of shit, coward asshole. Like, that is not a dom. A dom's mentality, like they get off on the power and control, but it's different. So, you know, you can basically have two very similar things, but the reasoning behind it is totally different. So, instead of being like a high school bully or a little kid with an anthill, Think of a dom as, like, a drill instructor in the military. As far as, like, don't focus on the content, but just focus on, like, the process of what they're doing. Because just in, like, a dom-sub relationship, and same thing with, you know, in the military, it's, it's a voluntary exchange of power. Like, the sub is giving the dom that power and they're giving it to them out of trust and respect and the same thing also applies to the drill instructor in the military the drill instructor in the military he's not giving you tons of shit and PTing you until you fucking die and whatever else he's not doing it be, just to be sadistic he's not doing it to to like fulfill some you know pathetic little I got picked on so now I want everyone else to you know pay type of thing sure I'm there might be a few exceptions but generally speaking the drill instructor who's being a total asshole he's doing it for your benefit because the lessons and everything else and the things that he instills inside of you may end up saving your life one day so it's it's like myself when and and the thing is like a dom sub relationship it doesn't have to just exist in the bedroom it can exist in the bedroom and then you guys can switch you know back in normal life or it can exist in just normal day-to-day -day life and then you switch and go the opposite in the bedroom there's no one size fits all you and your partner need to decide what what works for you guys. A another analogy as far as the psyche of a dom, it's like if you have a a puppy. When you discipline that puppy, you're not doing it because you want to just kick a dog or, you know, hear them yelp. I mean, if you're really doing that, you have some major fucking problems. But the point is you're disciplining the dog so the dog learns, you know, boundaries and it has a purpose. And, and the dog, like, as a result of him learning those boundaries and those tricks and whatever else that you're teaching them, they live a much more fulfilling life. So it's very similar in a dom-sub relationship because... Because, excuse me, because the sub is giving up that power 
And they're giving up, hopefully, you're giving up that power because you trust and respect your dom. That's absolutely, like, that is, that has to be there. If you're giving up that power because you're scared or afraid of everything else or, you know, anything else similar, you're in an abusive, toxic relationship. Get the fuck out right now. But if you're giving up that power and that control out of love and respect, that's the foundation of a healthy dom-sub relationship. And, you know, it's, it's mutually beneficial because the sub gets to, they get to give up, uh, um, should I sound a brain fart? But, you know, the, the, the stress and whatever else, you know, that it comes from, you know, the responsibility of having to make decisions and, you know, decide what to do or where to go or, you know, whatever in the bedroom, they're giving up all that. So it's like, they're able to relax and let go. And that's a reason why, like, a lot of very powerful men, typically, like, CEOs and stuff like that, tend to be more submissive in the bedroom. Because during the day, you know, they're always in charge. They're responsible for making the decisions. They're responsible for keeping everything together. So when they get home, you know, just home to their partner or, you know, home and go into the bedroom, it's their way of giving up that power, just relaxing, letting go, just being like, oh, fuck. And the other thing is, if you're the submissive, understand that the dom is also taking on all of that responsibility. You can't just be a dom and sit there and be lazy as fuck. Because if you're actually a good dom, you want your submissive to feel purpose you want them to better themselves you want them to do well i mean like for me being a dom it's it's not just a sexual thing i mean a lot of people who know me uh i have a a talent for i guess fixing people that really i mean i can't fix, fix absolutely everyone but i've been able to fix some people that no one else could and it's because I'm very stern and I give them structure and it's we, we build a healthy dom sub relationship and that power exchange and they respect and love and trust me and you know they do exactly what I say when I say and they end up bettering themselves as a result because like for me as a dom if if I don't see the submissive improving if if I don't see them actually um, you know bettering themselves whether it's working out or them you know eating better or you know they're they're you know doing better in school you know if they went back to school uh, or you know if if they're not you know gaining better control of their emotions if if I don't see someone improving. I lose all interest. Like, it's not even remotely worth my fucking time because why should I be willing to invest the time and effort if you're not willing to invest that time and effort into yourself? Because all you're doing is just wasting your own fucking time and wasting my time. Um, so really, again, it's like the military drill instructor and it's like the, you know, training a dog. Because, you know... In a healthy dom-sub relationship, the sub feels that purpose and it makes them feel better and makes them feel more complete as a person. Um, now, I don't actually, I don't remember if I mentioned this in my first two videos. But I have actually been um, a sub before. This was a very, very long time ago. Um, but in my, and this is totally my humble opinion, and it's just most of the good doms that I've known have been a submissive at one point in time in their life or another. And 
I wouldn't necessarily say that's absolutely necessary, but it gives, in my humble opinion, it gives the Dom a better understanding of what the other side of the coin looks like. It allows them to have more empathy and more understanding for the submissive role. And, you know, it gives them a greater uh, respect for it. And really, you know, it's kind of like, you know, for me, I would never do something to someone else that hasn't been done to me. And I feel like uh, for, I guess, a... <sighs> lack of a better example, you could kind of relate that to anal sex because if someone has been on the receiving end they're going to be a lot more patient and understanding and they're going to be able to talk the other person through it once they're on the top because they've been there before. And I just feel like that adds a whole nother level to a dom-sub relationship in a good way. I, I really can't see any bad um, coming from that. Uh, and then kind of going back to the psyche of the dom, me, I may have alluded to it in previous videos, but uh, to say my childhood was a rotting cesspool of shit, uh, I mean, hell on earth, would be putting it very, very lightly. Um, and as a result of that, I grew up and I became the protector. Um, generally speaking, most people, when they go through a very traumatic childhood or past, they either come out of that and become the protector or they come out of that and they become the abuser. And again, refer to my other two videos. And again, it's just looking at the little things like how a dom treats wait staff. Because if you're the sub, you want to find someone who's the protector, not someone who's the abuser and do not fall for like just some domestic violence, abusive piece of shit, asshole, fucking little kid with the fucking anthill pretending to be a dom. He's not a dom because it's almost like, again, going back to the military drill instructor puppy analogy, when I'm in that dom role, I become very protective of my sub and they trust that I would never put them in a position that would hurt them or you know that basically no matter what i'm always looking out for their best interest and that's where you go back to the foundation of love and trust and respect which i talked about in my earlier videos mm. now there's one last thing i wanted to talk about and that's PTSD. And this is a very, very touchy subject just because every single person has their own experiences. Um, and not everyone has PTSD. I mean, it is possible to find a Dom or a sub who really doesn't have any emotional baggage and they're totally there and, you know, a healthy person emotionally, mentally. And that's great. If you found that, that's fucking amazing and I'm happy for you however if you and and this is again one of those things where you go back to trust and communication and everything else if you do have certain things in your past you need to be completely upfront about that with your partner um using myself as an example there, there's just certain things um, this isn't so much a sexual thing, but like if I'm sleeping with someone and someone were to come in and yank the covers off of me, I mean, it, it wouldn't even be a conscious choice. Like I would black out and I would probably kill the person with my bare hands. It's, there's a few things, situations that I can't be in just because I have a very, uh, that's for another video. But the point is, there's certain things and certain triggers which, if I'm going to be in certain situations with them, 
Um, I'm going to be very upfront and be like, you need to know this and this and this because I don't ever want to put myself or my partner in that position. So if you are someone who has suffered uh, sexual abuse and there's something in particular that's going to uh, trigger something with um, you, just be upfront about that. And if you're the other person, you need to really listen and, you know, make sure you fully understand it. Don't just be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. And then what about the weather? Like, no, this is like some really major serious shit that needs to be addressed. And a lot of times, I don't think I mentioned this in my previous video, but a lot of the times, um, physical and sexual abuse, uh, it can, like, the body will remember it, but the mind won't. And this is something extremely important. Uh, for example, um, I one time had a partner where they didn't actually remember any sexual abuse, but when it came to their ass, it was like, I mean, just clenched up like a vice. I mean, it was like, it was very, very noticeable that the body remembered something. And with this particular individual, I mean, it really, really, really took a long time. I mean, it took months of me just putting my finger there and kind of, you know, gently rubbing around, you know, before their body just relaxed a little bit, you know, and then we go a little bit more, relax a little bit more. And basically the moral of that story is their body had to learn to trust me because even though they you know themselves trusted me their body still had that you know those memories ingrained which are obviously not positive and we were able to overcome that but this was after like months and months and months and months of you know moving i mean i'm talking tiny itty bitty baby steps um and then Especially if you're in the submissive role, like if you have any PTSD, any triggers, any anything, you need to be totally upfront with your dom about that. Because if you've got someone pretending to be a dom who's just a sadistic, abusive asshole, they're not going to give a shit. But if you have a true dom that actually, you know, cares and loves and respects you and they end up triggering something like let's say they're choking you and you know your body freaks out or you panic or whatever it, again you know it's totally understandable i'm not saying like oh my god you're a liar and you're a terrible person but as a result of that if they're a good dom they're going to be a lot more reluctant and a lot more hesitant to go past you know other lines in the future because if I put myself in that position, I'd be like, okay, if you didn't feel comfortable telling me that, what else are you not comfortable telling me? So really, I mean, this is like, I mean, aside from like the foundations of trust and love and respect and all that stuff, like the PTSD shit, um, that is super, super, super important. And like, I, I don't like to make categorical statements and, you know, it could be that chicken or the egg thing, but just understand too, that a lot of people, um, how do I say this? A lot of people who have been through traumatic experiences end up going into BDSM or dom sub relationship or other things. And it's kind of like a way of coping or that's number one or number two, it's just, as a result of that first experience they had, they they naturally enjoy that. And, and this sounds really sick and fucked up, so I apologize for that. But basically where a lot of fetishes and kinks come from is, let's say, for example, you have a uh, kid and, you know, some adult inappropriately touches that little kid's penis and, you know, abuse ensues, like, obviously, that's wrong, 
100%. However, because physically that, um, you know, the kid's penis being touched, because physically that feels good, at least in some part of the brain, even though everything else is wrong, it's like a little wire gets crossed in their brain and once that connection is made, it never really goes away. And I'm I'm trying to dumb this down as much as possible, but basically because of that first experience they had, their body or you know, their body almost is like, okay, I don't like this, this is wrong, but it feels good. So a lot of the times, you know, as adults, people will go into more fetish kink niche stuff as a way of, you know, I guess coping with that or, you know, taking what happened and then making it their own so that it is healthy, you know. So really, you can't talk too much about this stuff, especially, you know, in a dom sub or BDSM relationship, especially, um, you know, d- how far down the rabbit hole you go. Um, and yeah, really, I, I hope this helped answer some of the questions you guys left in the previous videos. Um, I'd love to hear your questions, comments, thoughts, everything in the comments below. I always do take the time to read those. And uh, I'll definitely make a follow-up to this probably in a month or so. Um, If you did enjoy the video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. I love you all.